What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel for a new movie review. This is a movie that was not on my radar until I was asked to moderate something for it and then it had to be on my radar and I'm really glad that happened because the movie is really damn good. We're talking about the movie Medusa Deluxe, a new A24 release and I have the pleasure of reviewing a really great movie with a really great person. Christy Puchko, welcome back to the channel. Hi, it's exciting to be back. Hi friend. I'm so happy you're here. I mean, we'll have to uh, we'll have to find some time to play some virtual beer pong again. But until then, a wonderful movie review is really all I could ask for because this movie is something else. Just in case anyone else out there was like me and did not know what Medusa Deluxe was, it is a murder mystery that takes place at a high end hairdressing competition. And the entire movie is made to look like it was captured in a single oneer. And it's incredible. Christy, what did you think of Medusa Deluxe? I want to start off by, I have a screener for it that I was like, maybe I'll get around to this. Because for those that are not super aware of how this works, you just get so many screeners that like, it's overwhelming. And I was like looking at my screeners, trying to figure out what to watch. And I think an hour before I was going to make the call, like you texted me and you're like, have you heard of Medusa Deluxe? And I was like, uh, I have a screener, like you should watch this. And so I put it to the top of my list. So glad I did. I ended up watching it twice. Um, I think this is so, so fun and it's like, it's, it is a murder mystery. Uh, but for me, what's really fun about it is just the characters are so interesting. Cause it's like, it has the like framing of a whodunit. Like it's like, here are curious characters trapped together in a situation where someone is dead, but there's no detective. Like there's no Poirot, there's no Benoit Blanc, there's no Miss Marple. There's no one who shows up and goes like, I'm going to take everyone in hand and figure all this out. And also, um, where a lot of those kind of situations, it's very rich people. And like, you're talking like, Ooh, the secret lives of rich people. Like most of the people in this are not rich. A lot of them are very marginalized and like the way that they are making a name for themselves, making a life for themselves and their families is through hairdressing. So like, what's funny to me is the, that it is like a very, like the hair is amazing in this movie, but it's a regional competition. They keep emphasizing it's a regional competition. So it's not like if you win this contest, then Beyonce is going to call you. Like that's not what's going to happen, but like it's still life or death for these people. And then it's like literally life or death. And it was so fun to watch the characters taking like hair this seriously to the point where someone's like, yeah, but somebody got scalped. And she's like, da, 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 da. I have things to do. I have hair to do. <laughs> and like that made it so fun to watch the first time and then watching it again when I like knew what yes. was what it was just more exciting because you're just you get to kind of pay more attention to the technique involved in not just the filmmaking but also the hair constructions and I like also watched my screener twice for that reason I when I when I press play again I had no clue what I was getting myself into all I know was a24 had a new movie coming out and I'm like all right sure why not I'll watch anything they release and especially with that first scene where if you don't know what the movie is and you're just hurled into this like really riveting but intense conversation you're sitting and they're, you're like, I'm mesmerized, but what the fuck am I watching right now? What is going to happen? And it just, it sucks you in and it takes you for quite the ride. And when you know where it all ends up in the end and you can go back to the beginning and find all these fun little like Easter eggs and nods to the truth planted throughout. And you have a very firm understanding of, you know, who these people are, what they're about, what their top priority goals are, whether it's the competition or something else, it makes for an even richer watch. And one of the things about this movie that is most incredible, wow worthy, shocking, astounding, any descriptor of the sorts is the fact that it's a first feature. Yeah. How, how is this movie a feature directorial debut? Again, the movie is made to look like it is shot in a one and it very much does look that way. But if you know about the behind the scenes of, uh, of making a film like that, there are obviously hidden cuts placed throughout, but those hidden cuts are perfect. The long takes are not only really cool to see play out, but they serve the story and the mystery and the atmosphere really well. And I just like literally everything that happens in those longer takes, like in particular certain stunt scenes, like there's a, there's a little fight between mm -hmm. two people where I was really impressed by the level of stunt work that was able to be captured with the actual actors. And then also there is, there is something with flames and I'm sitting there like, damn, 
like there there has to be some visual effects involved but still if you're doing these in long takes my god that is an impressive thing to pull off and again from a first time feature director yeah it's 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 fascinating to watch cuz you're like you can see we're like oh well obviously you storyboard this but there's such a big leap in like how you would strategize this and then actually executing it and also like nobody in it is a big name so you don't know these faces. I mean, a lot of them on IMDb don't even have like headshots up. And like, it's nuts to me. It's so wild because one, they're so good. Like, yeah. this is it. Like, and two, it adds to the feeling of like, it almost, I, I, it, it gives it a verite style because you're just, you're with them. And what's so impressive is as the, the camera is not just like hanging out in a room, as you pointed out, like there's action, there's, a, but there's also like parts where it's like weaving around characters as they're having conversations. And what's so incredible about that is the camera is like, it's not doing that like, oops, stumble, like it's very smooth. Mm -hmm. It's very, like, very conscious of how it's behaving, very conscious of where it's going. And incredibly, like the actors don't like have that thing where they're like, oh God, there's the camera. Like, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how with so much going on, you don't have a million. I mean, maybe they have a million takes. I have no idea. But it looks so seamless. And that's what's so astounding. And like, there's parts where, like, if you study filmmaking and stuff, you're like, oh, this is where the cut is when we're doing this pan thing and blah, blah. And like, it's not that you can see it. It's that, like, you can, lo you can logic, right? Like, that's logically where this cut is going to go. But what's so cool about that is because you have the space of these long scenes, like the opening scene, which is. What's we didn't even say this, but so the movie starts after the murder, or the yes. the death has happened. So like it starts with someone complaining that she's doing great hair and it's gonna get ignored because of this death. And like she is so forceful in this performance that I was like, oh, this is the main character. And then we leave her for like a while and I was like oh and it's what's so interesting is depending on where you go depends how the tone of the movie changes yeah because some people are like she's comedically ag angry about it and I love I she like especially the second watch I was like my favorite character my, I, I want, my main character I want everything for Cleve <laughs> but like she Lee like basically her model is like I need a break and we end up following Angie the model down the hallways and da 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 and then it, the film keeps following different people and it's like for some of them the movie becomes a melodrama for some of them it's a detective now one of the models does think that she's gonna like figure this out and like at what point they're like you got old Matlock on her and like I I just I love how the movie's tone would change based on whose perspective we're following and it didn't feel like hokey or disconnected no. to me it felt really fluid because we are like you're just really with the flow of this and I forget the cinematographer's name do you have it handy I do have it handy it's Robbie Ryan amazing amazing yeah. work and notably Robbie Ryan and Thomas Hardiman is the name yes. of the director like they both get their names in the trailer which you don't often see the direct like the DP getting in the trailer but also the hair designer is in the trailer with like their name gets a title well, Here's a fun fact. When I was moderating for for Thomas Hardiman, he was busy explaining how even before this movie, he just had a deep appreciation and, and respect for the craft of, of hairdressing. And clearly that served this movie quite well. And, you know, going going into what you were just saying, just in terms of, you know, the the feel of the film changing from character to character, they successfully do that while also making it feel as though all those people truly do belong in the same world together. But even when things are really heightened and the movie is, you know, somewhat poking fun at the idea that they are prioritizing this hairdressing competition over someone's life, it never does that, like, with any disrespect. It always honors the fact that, you know, like, we're passionate about movies, they're passionate about hairdressing and, and what this all means to them and how many months have gone into planning these looks and... I don't like one of the things that wound up taking me the most by the end of the movie and especially on my second watch is just like what passionate creative professionals <laughs> these people are no yeah. matter what role they fill and it made them feel like real human beings that I grew to care about quite deeply. You know what it just reminded me of? Because I was trying to think, I agree with you completely. It reminds me of those hobby docs that were like really big in the 2000s, like King of Kong and Air Guitar Nation, okay. where like you start off going like, 
these people and like you walk in being like who is spending their time trying to get so good at this thing like who cares and like I feel like the film accepts that you're going to come in with that level of like what is she even doing because when we meet Cleve and she is building this hairstyle uh it is only part way done it looks weird it looks unfinished and she's explaining constantly to everyone like what it's gonna be and no one gets it and like when you finally see it you're like Oh okay. yeah, so like and that, we... that's the reaction. the The final look like took my breath away. <laughs> it's it is astonishing looking, and it's like it's just it's so cool because it does remind me of those hobby docs where like the ones I mentioned. Like I start off watching it being like, who cares about who's good at Donkey Kong? Like it's it. We're in the two thousands now. Who plays Donkey Kong or like Air Guitar Nation? Like who cares if you you can pretend while playing guitar? But those films effectively show you this world in such a way that you understand the passion and you want to be a part of it so by the end of the film like I understood why the reaction is not like wait somebody was scalped it's like like I get it and like it's also just like I uh, so one of the one of the characters says like people grieve differently and like it's kind of a it's almost treated like a a punch like it's a throwaway joke in it because like the the way people have just been like well this person's behaving really strange whatever and she's like some people grieve differently and then immediately they're like do you think it was her but like it, it is true. Like, I mean, you know, there are people who in a time of crisis turn to the thing they know best to give them a sense of control. So it also makes sense that like for the models, that means like figuring out what they're going to be able to do with like this situation that's going sideways for the, the, the hairstylist. It means trying to figure out like Cleve's hairstyle is probably not even going to go on stage because at this point they're still kind of trying to figure out if they're going to do the show. But she's like, I am finishing this. And yeah. she's like, nothing else. I'm going to get photos of this. I'm going to prove that I did it. And like, I watching it again, it was just like, man, I loved being in the thrall of all of that. Like the, it's so funny to me. Cause like, yeah, it's technically a murder mystery, but to me, that's not even the thing that defines the movie. It's just kind of the jumping point, you know, especially obviously no spoilers here, but especially when you get to the end and you see the point they're making with that murder mystery and what it means for them as a community, rather than just, you know, pegging one individual as guilty. I found that really refreshing and like ultimately far more satisfying than the large majority of who done it murder mysteries I've seen recently. Yeah, the ending's not cute. The ending is really, like, it, it, it's that continued thing of showing us... Because, again, watching it a second time, I'm really glad I did because I was able to pay more attention to kind of the backstories that are hinted at throughout, where it's like, you have a lot of people who are immigrants to England, uh, where the film is set, and you have people who grew up poor in this in this setting. There, I think there's, like, one or two who kind of, like, touched that their families had some money or that they now have money. But a lot of people involved in this competition, like, they are making their own destiny through hair and like it's just like that's there's a romance there and the film gets that but the film also gets that people watching may not be on board right away it's hard to be able to do both things i mean describing it that way is i don't know how you felt about this film but is also making me think of the recently released theater camp which i thought did a very good job of you know inside baseball type jokes for folks who know the theater camp experience and can have fun poking fun at those things but also acting as an on-ramp for someone who not even doesn't care about theater camp or never had that experience but maybe isn't even into theater at all, but it manages to do both things and therefore get the widest possible audience or it should get the widest possible audience, which I think is the case for Medusa Deluxe as well. Yeah, I hope this is kind of a sleeper hit because it's one that was like, I we ran the trailer on Mashable.com, but like I didn't necessarily like pay attention. I mean, honestly, we, we run a lot of trailers. So it wasn't like I was ignoring it, but it was kind of one of those ones like, you got that, great, let's go. Yeah. And then when I got offered a screener, I was like, yeah, I'll check it out. And it was truly because I was like, it's A24 and I don't know what the title means. So I'm interested. I am curious. And I threw it on one night after a very stressful day. And that's part of why I watched it again, too, because I was like, I'm not sure how like cognizant I am at this moment to be able to accept this movie. But like I was like when I realized that they were doing a, the a, like they were shooting it in real time is like essentially a one take. I was losing my mind because I was like, which is part of why I wanted to watch it again, because I was like, wait what how are you doing and like you know especially because then i'm like and i'm like afterwards i was like yeah this is his first film and it's just wildly ambitious but like man i i'm like to rely on and i don't want to say non-actors because they might just be performers i'm not familiar with they might be from theater i don't actually know and that's kind of the exciting thing 
Um, it's but it's like it feels so surprising. Like what's cool about it is it feels like the kind of movie you and I would see at midnight at a festival. Yeah. You know, and like to maintain the vibe of that when you're just getting a screener on your TV, that's impressive. Yes. It's very impressive. So impressive. I think this will take take us into at least my score first. I am gonna give Medusa Deluxe four and a half out of five Deweys on the Dewey Decimovie scale. And I might even dare to say that this could wind up being one of my favorite movies of the year. And I hope that it also gets the widest possible audience because this also seems to me like we're in August already. It's it's time to start taking these, these comments very seriously. This seems like one of the best movies of the year that does deserve a significant amount of awards consideration for what they managed to achieve. And if I'm being realistic about it, I know it's not going to break into the Oscar conversation, even though I do think it would have a couple of uh, a couple of categories there that it would deservingly be a part of. But things like the Independent uh, Spirit Awards, any type of uh, first feature director award that Thomas Hardiman could get his hands on. But then going into the cast here, there there isn't a weak link in the bunch. Everyone is exceptional. And it's a pretty large ensemble. So the fact that everyone gets their time in the spotlight, manages to make their character feel like a whole real person and make an impression is very impressive for every single one of them. But we've already brought her up a couple of times. Cleve, Claire Perkins, steals the show here. And, and that is a name that if I were voting for everything, would be in Best Actress consideration across the board. I I think this movie is very deserving. That's part of the reason why I texted you, hoping you would want to do this review for me because I want to boost this movie as much as I possibly can. It is an incredible feat. And yeah, I'm going to say it. One of my favorite movies of 2023 thus far. I love that. My score would be four. I really like it. I, I, I think a lot of the performances are really good, and I don't necessarily want to shout out the one that made me kind of go, but there's like one part where I was like, what are we doing? And I think it took me a while yeah. to warm up to one of the performances, um, but I really loved it, and I, I paid it forward in that as soon as I saw it, I texted a friend of mine who I thought would like it and who's a critic, and I was like, request the screener and i saw them like instagram that they were watching it like they post they just posted like the poster in their instagram and i messaged immediately i was like what do you think it's like i will text you when i'm done and then at the end they were like this is amazing i was like yes but i agree i i'd love to see this get especially like indie spirit award attention i think absolutely i think thomas hardiman has made it a really incredible first feature i'd love to see the right uh the director of cinematography uh, yes. the director the cinematographer get his flowers because this is just extraordinary i think this is gonna be a really hard year for cinematography because like we're gonna see like barbie looks amazing and Oppenheimer looks amazing and if dune 2 comes out i think that's gonna be a really big contender for cinematography but like this is man this is really something special and like i just feel like people who get it are going to get it and be really into the cinematography on this one, which I know it's, that sounds like it, like, you know, I don't know. I'm, I, I worry that we're making this sound too like art and technique, but like yeah. such a fun movie. Cause that's the, the thing is, it's like about 10 minutes in, I, and I keep playing down the murder mystery. Cause it was like, no, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not as interested in who did this. Is it just, I want to keep meeting on these people. I want to keep talking to all these people because to me, I don't know that all of them felt really well-rounded. Well Some of them really do. I think Cleve comes off feeling really well-rounded. I think Divine feels very yes. fine for me as a character. Um, some of them remi remain kind of like eh, two-dimensional, but in a way that's like you get who they are because it is it is playing into the murder mystery that like you know when you go to mur when you see murder mystery movies usually there are people who are playing kind of archetypes and there's a little bit of that here. Um, but like, how many of us know about the archetypes of hairdressing? So like. <laughs> It doesn't feel like cliched to me exactly, but it's just kind of like, they'll be like, this is a very self-involved model moving on. And like, I get it, you know, but we can handle that. Fair um, enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but like, truly I had such fun watching it. I, it's funny, but like, it's not like there are punchlines. It's like, I, I was trying to think of, of like, it, there was like a span in the nineties where there were movies about hairdressers a lot for some reason. Okay. I like, I don't remember it. Like I was trying to remember the other day and it was like, this is not broad like those though. This like truly has like a verite element for a good amount of it that it feels like you are backstage in like these sweaty green rooms with models and hair design, like hairdressers. And like, I really loved how, 
enveloping this is. Like, it really feels like they pitch. I actually already wrote my review. It's not up yet, but I wrote my review. And it's so funny you said that because, like, literally, like, there are some movies that, like, welcome you in. And there are some movies that pitch you in. And this movie is just like, we're going. Yeah. Follow, follow along. Don't get lost. And, like, I really love that because, like, the kind of being the fly on the wall or the ghost on the shoulder or, like, maybe the idea is that we're supposed to be the detective in it. We're, like, following it around and we're looking for clues. Maybe that's the idea. But whatever it is, it's really, like, engaging and interactive. And again, I just watched this on my TV. Like, I would love to go see this on a big screen. Oh, I wish. I really do wish that my first screening was, you know, with a midnight crowd on the big yeah. screen. Because I have a feeling the reaction would have been huge. And, you know, everyone out there is going to get the opportunity, maybe not a midnight screening, but to, to seek out an opportunity to see this on the big screen, hopefully with a full theater. The movie comes out on August 11th. I can't recommend it enough. I'm pretty sure you will agree and, yeah. and stay the same. I love it. In, like right now, it's definitely in my running for best film, my favorite films of the year. Uh, and like, I've, you know, I, I've hit some of the festivals and stuff. So I've seen a lot. And obviously we have a lot that's to come, uh, you know, negotiations permitting. But like, man, this one just really, it was really cool. Because I was just looking for like a fun genre movie. I was like, hey, 24 knows their stuff. This will probably be a good time. That was my expectation. Like, make it weird, make it fun to watch. And like, man, A24, I tweeted this the other day, but like, A24 is just knocking me out this year. Yes. Like, I like Bo is Afraid, but also Bo is Afraid stressed me out immensely. But they also have Talk to Me. Problemista got delayed, but you and I both know that Problemista is amazing. Yes. I do like, like Problemista. <laughs> like, A24 is just crushing it. And this is a part of that. Like, uh, I think Delu uh, Del uh, Medusa Deluxe is partially getting buried because it's tricky right now to like, because of, of the strikes going on, there's like, press is a lot harder to do, but I think they were smart because August is a weird month where there's not a lot of big stuff hitting. Mm -hmm. And like, this is the kind of movie that people can talk, tell their friends about. And like, you can kind of get a whisper campaign going of like being like, do you see the movie? It's moving about us. And like, when we talk about, uh, for those of you who have not been to a midnight movie at a festival, when we talk about that, the vibe there is that it's almost like a rock show. Like people show up like, let's do this. Let's get weird. And they're so willing to just like feel whatever the thing this movie's going to throw at them is. And like this film, I hesitate to use the word experiment because I feel like when people say that, it's often like a code for like, it's not very good, but they tried something. Oh, no. But like, <laughs> I think this is good. And it was like a bold move to be like, this is all going to be like, it's going to look like it's real time. It's going to look like it's a one take. And like, that's all really cool. But then the hair, even with like, I keep getting back to the hair. What is the hairdresser's name? Because this is driving me nuts. The person who designed the hair. Um, I caught, I clicked out of that. I'm going back to it. I should remember this person's name off the top of my head at this point, but I do I will not. apologize. I normally have this stuff handy and today is. I'm on every wrong IMDb page at this point because well, IMDb point. barely okay. functions. Totally fine. Yeah. No, my God. Oh my God. That's like a whole other conversation. I know. I could do a whole video <laughs> about how disappointed I am in, in a box office mojo and IMDb. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they've, it's such garbage. Um, but like the 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 uh, hairdresser for their, the hair designer for this movie, the other thing they do is because people get interrupted mid movie, you're seeing a lot of half done designs. I think one or two people at the beginning have done designs, but there are the designs that are done that people didn't think were necessarily going to win that year. And then it's like at the end, um, you get to see some more finished designs and even so basically even the character like characters get an arc but hair gets an arc where at the end like you mm -hmm. see hair that you're like what and like it's just I, after you've gotten all these like all these things about what what hair is to people and what it means and the spiritual side and the artistic side and the, the personal expression and like the end feels like a victory when you get to see like completed hair yeah, and and don't don't be so quick to to up and out when you see the first credit hit the screen. I I will tease that because it would be a damn shame if someone got up and left this movie too soon. I I hope I pronounced the the last name correctly, but the hair designer on this movie is Eugene Suleiman. I don't know how to pronounce that. I should have looked it up beforehand. I apologize. I it, mean, I, I, I was prepared five sure minutes ago. And I am not as professional on Sundays, apparently. Yeah. But, like, truly, <laughs> the so hair funny. is just, I mean, it's yeah. so cool. And it's, like, it's it's cool because there's, like, there are movies where, like, the hair and makeup is astounding. Again, we talked, like, Barbie movie. There's a lot of really great hair and makeup stuff going on there. But it's not, like, the point. 
And like to watch hair get centered in this way, I, I just thought it was really cool and beautiful. And like, it's not just people being like, oh, hair is so important, hair is so important. Like at one point, one character's just like, yeah, I don't get it. And then it allows for a character to have that conversation and be like, let me explain to you why this matters. And like, it is a little bit of preaching to the audience there, but it comes from a place that makes sense because you're seeing a character who was pretty hard like show us off your side of their self so there's yeah. this really exciting element of of being let into a secret world i think that's part of what makes this movie so successful to me is like it's not just about like you know who did it and whatever it's also kind of about the the the, the secret desires of the people who mm -hmm. are competing and like you know i man i just i super dug this one and it's like it's very I, justifiable <laughs> to have that kind of dialogue in this too because every single character you see featured in the movie is kind of at a different level within the hairdressing competition not necessarily in terms of talent but like yeah also in terms of talent but where where they are dedicating themselves to that craft in a different way to in a, a different extent and like balancing the other parts of their lives with their hairdressing ambitions differently. So it kind of very much makes sense in the story where it is not necessarily a beat that's meant to like explain something away to an audience, but very much speaks to who somebody else is and winds up enhancing a character in the process. And I feel like that justifies dialogue like that. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that they're doing Q and A's. Cause like the thing is the trailer, I like the trailer, but in the trailer, you don't get a sense of the motion. You don't get a sense of the following. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're kind of trying to use A24 mystique of, like, check out this movie and, like, cool. It makes but, sense. like, yeah, and I get it. It's, but it's, like, man, as soon as the camera started following the model, I was, like, hang on. Yeah. Well, that's what that's what our job is for. Yeah, that's and we're, we're And we're doing it. We're doing our job right now. We're making sure everybody watching this video feels the urgency to go out and see Medusa Deluxe. Christy, before I close this out, where can everybody find your wonderful work on the internet? I am the film editor at Mashable.com, so I write every day at Mashable. We have really great stuff there. I do a lot of uh, film reviews and interviews, and uh, we have a lot of really fun things coming up that I can't talk about just yet. So check us out, Mashable.com. I'm also on Twitter, but is any or X? Ugh. I mean, whatever. <laughs> I'm on social platforms under my name. It's Christy Puchko, so look for that. I think that's a fair way to sum that up right now. Uh, thank you so much to everybody out there watching, and do not forget Medusa Deluxe in theaters on August 11th.